Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to another episode of Celebrating Act 2. Today, John and I have the pleasure of having Dr. Liz Lister with us, and uh, we're going to discuss growth hormones. Dr. Liz, hormones. You're the hormone expert. What's I this am. about growth hormones? Yes, absolutely. Growth hormone is so interesting. People think about growth hormone and they think about kids growing, right? Makes sure. sense. Sure. Right. People say, oh, well, I'm already done growing. I'm tall enough. Well, that's all. That's great. That's good. However, once we're done growing, growth hormone is still made by the brain and it's really could be called adult cell repair hormone. Oh, that's good. Yes. It is a good one. It's different than other hormones. It is rather than the steroid ring structure of most of the hormones like estrogen and testosterone and all of those that I also like talking about. Uh, this one's different. This one's made up of amino acids, just like proteins, but they're short. It's shorter than most proteins. It's what's called a peptide hormone. All right. Have you guys heard about peptides? This is an up and coming topic. Yeah, it's a little over my head, but I've heard the name, certainly. It, you're going to hear more about it, and then we'll, we can talk about it another time as well. We can say more about that. But today I wanted to just say a little more in general about growth hormone. It's made directly by the brain and goes straight out to the cells. So there's a part of the brain that usually make what we call stimulating hormones, like to the thyroid, to the ovaries in women or the testes in men. And then those organs turn around and make their hormones. But growth hormone is different. Growth hormone is made directly by that part of the brain, goes straight out to the cells. And it does all kinds of things. It causes blood vessels to dilate, which lowers blood pressure. It helps the brain. It helps increase muscle. It helps you burn fat. It helps your immune function. It helps your thyroid hormone work better lowers blood sugar it's a and that's just a partial list so uh, go, go, ahead, John. go ahead Art. so uh are these the kinds of things that we should expect that uh will become more and more in use um uh, not necessarily we call you're calling them growth hormones but really aren't they uh in many ways just keeping our bodies working better well, it is one of the many hormones in the hormone symphony. And there are a lot of ways to have it stay at a good level because kids that are growing, okay, there's a the test that we use to measure it is called IGF-1. And that it's like a marker for how much growth hormone is your body making. And just to give you a reference point, kids that are growing like in their teenage years, their IGF-1 levels run five, six hundred or more. Then it levels off and then it declines as we get older. And so it's really good as adults if we can keep the level closer to 200, okay? And there's a, there's a bunch of ways to do that, all right? Now I am talking about the same growth hormone that the athletes use 20 times proper dosing. Mm. All right, they give it a bad reputation because they are, it's not being properly supervised in most cases. And like I said, they're using 20 times proper dosing. So the supply gets restricted and it drives the price up, which is okay for them. But we are hearing more about it as the baby boomer generation is uh, moving on. They want to feel, you know, everybody wants to feel good. We want to feel vibrant. We want our muscles to be in good shape. We want all the hard work we do at the gym to be worthwhile. And growth hormone is often a part of that. So there's a few ways to boost it short of actually uh, injectable growth hormone is, is okay. I think it's fine when it's used properly. However, there are a lot of other ways, luckily, to boost it up. Want to hear a couple of ways? Sure do. To boost that? Awesome. Number one is sleep. We have talked about that. Good quality sleep and protecting our sleep. Sleep is, usually we, re we release growth hormone at night while we're sleeping. In fact, the peak release is about an hour after falling asleep into that deep, deep sleep. The brain is starting to make the growth hormone. It's going to lead to all that cell repair. So that's number one. The other way that is without using anything or having to take anything else 
is something called burst exercise. Have you heard of that? Interval yeah. training. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So sure. burst, yeah, burst exercise, and not every single day. People who are exercising really intensively every single day, they're not giving their body a chance to recover right. and generate growth hormone in order to have the cell repair. So I think that four to five times a week of these types of interval training or the aerobic stop and start kind of training, that's plenty. That so, wait, what so, about, so far, about those... Dr. Liz, so far you've talked about uh, uh, lifestyle changes to yes. uh, uh, boost uh, the value of things that are already existing in our body. But are you also going to be talking about therapies which uh, might be in, uh, ingested either by a pill or uh, uh, inoculation? Uh, sure, sure, absolutely. So there are supplements that can be helpful that do, in some people, effectively boost their body's production of growth hormone. There are new treatments referred to as peptide treatments. A lot of people will have heard of this that are, are listening. They are some, they're considered experimental because they're not made by a pharmaceutical company. They're made by a compounding pharmacy, and it's a capsule that most people take at bedtime. And that stimulates, as we said, the body's making growth hormone while we're sleeping. The peptide treatment is doing, in a lot of people, a really good job. I've seen people's levels double just from using this oral capsule, which is this peptide treatment. It's got abbreviation MK677. Unfortunately, because most doctors don't really know about these types of more advanced treatments, they're considered experimental, but really they've been in use for at least a decade that I'm aware of, so probably even longer than that. It's also called ibutamorin. Ibutamorin. I'll send you the spelling so we can put it in the show notes for everybody. Good. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Now, I was going to ask uh, Dr. Liz about the downside of taking, uh, let's say, supplements, because they're, they're pretty common. You can see them on the uh, store shelves, you know, it's an over-the-counter supplement. Uh, I don't remember the letters for it, but it says human growth hormone, HGH, I guess. Um, yeah. I was going to ask about the downside for people our age, over 60. There's really not much downside. Now, I would be hesitant with uh, some of the over-the-counter types of stuff that you can find. They are not all equally effective. It would be good if people can get their IGF-1 level measured before they take the supplement and then take it for three months or so and then get the level checked again and make sure it's actually working. So there is a way to tell if the supplement is working. Really, honestly, John, there pretty much is not a downside. All right, growth hormone is so beneficial. It helps so much with cell repair. I will tell you that in the last, oh, 15 years or so, that I have helped, that I've monitored people's growth hormone level and, and helped them boost it up. The worst that I've seen is related to the fact that growth hormone helps the cells hold on to hydration. So you know how younger people have, you know, little kids, younger people, they've got the dewier skin, right? And that yeah. we lose yeah. that tissue uh, we lose the elasticity in the tissue and yeah. we lose the strength in the tissue. We, right, we lose we'd that. all love to have, yeah. All right. And so growth hormone helps with that. And so I've had people have occasionally some joint pain. Uh, again, this is super rare. I would say it's been fewer than about, I think I can think of about three or four people in the last 15 years among all the people that I've had use either the supplements or the peptide treatments or even using growth hormone. And that was, I think, only in people who used growth hormone. All right. And I believe that that, and it stops as soon as you stop. So it doesn't cause any long-term damage or harm. Mm -hmm. It's just a side effect because those cells are trying to hold on to fluid. And for some people, it doesn't work out exactly as intended. But for most people, it works out really well. Two quick questions for you, Dr. Liz. Uh, yeah. before our audience goes uh, running to their doctor and saying, well, I want this because Dr. Liz said this and so on and so forth. From a practical yes. standpoint, uh, be, besides 
uh, it appears uh, uh, that uh, it helps to get the most of what you got. Uh, I what a, what are the effects of reversing aging? So if your skin is sagging a bit, do you expect that to plump it up, or uh, are people going to be expecting too much from growth hormones? Well, the key is not to expect huge results from only one hormone. That's the hmm. key. Really, what I, for example, what I do with patients is the whole hormone balancing, looking at a lot of different hormones. That's that's really what I have to say about that. Growth hormone absolutely helps, and sometimes it can make a really nice difference. However, not all by itself. Not with eating a bad diet and doing no exercise. It's not going to compensate for that. Yeah, or not okay. getting enough sleep. Right. Absolutely. That's exactly so right. So if, if um, I, I'm going to venture to guess that most GPs, uh, family doctors, probably are not really going to be very up on this uh, topic. Um, yeah. But uh, you have uh, more information on your website about this? Not very much right now, but I will. But people are welcome to send me questions and ask okay. more about why don't, it. Why don't we, why don't we uh, uh, have you tell them? Uh, where to go take a peek and oh, maybe sure. over the next week or so, you'll, uh, a couple of weeks, there'll be a, this information will be up there. Great. Wonderful. Absolutely. My website is the best way. That's where I put all the articles that I write. You can email me through it. It's www.drlizmd.com, D-R-L-I-Z-M-D.com. Good. And it's, uh, you've got lots of good stuff on your website even if you don't have a lot on growth hormone yet. I'm working on that. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Well, Dr. Liz, this has been great information because it's such a popular topic, uh, particularly, yes. as you mentioned, among athletes. But even for older people, you know, you hear the word growth hormone, hormone and at 60 or 70, you say to yourself, gee, I could use some of that. So this is good information for us. Thank you. You're so welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.